you went f my yard, I would with all of you. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that? You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Ahrens, and he can announce himself. I'm Jared Mounts. There you go. <clears throat> what do we got going on today, guys? So we got uh, Jeremy back with us in, uh, for part two. And uh, part one kind of brought him from childhood up to present day. And I think today we're going to be kind of looking at uh, present day into the, to his future, kind of mm-hmm. what his goals and plans are uh, for the future. want to congratulate him on a big buck. He just killed a big buck here, what, yesterday or uh, last week? Sunday. Sunday? Sunday. Yep. Muzzle loader. Yep. Hunt. Yes, and sir. his dad. They doubled up. So yep. Dad, First time I've ever done that. That's Universe pretty cool. smiles. That's going to be a good Thanksgiving, dude. That's awesome. That's right. Um, I was telling him, too, if you look in the current Bassmaster uh, magazine, they kind of talk about a correlation between hunters and fishermen and some of the better fishermen out there are also good hunters mm-hmm. and how they how they kind of go hand in hand uh but anyway uh, you should have been born in alabama right <laughs> <those guys. laughs> that's a good segue too speaking of alabama so uh had the opportunity uh jeremy did um everybody's familiar with the combine for football um bassmaster came out with a combine i think this is the was the first yep, year first one for fishing and so uh I want you to kind of tell us how you came about that and, and uh, it took place out in Alabama and just kind of tell us about that experience. It, it was it was awesome. It was, the way it was set up, it was awesome. Uh, Dad got an email on his phone. He said, all right. They sent him something about the combine. So we started reading up on it first ever. So it's all it's for uh, high school students that are looking to go to college. And there's uh, college scouts. There's It was really cool how they had it all set up. I mean, you go to the, they have these hotels for you and they have this big, uh, I don't want to say it was arena, but it was kind of, it was kind of like that. Mm-hmm. They had all the different college booths for it. Then the very first day of the combine, it was like a meet and greet for all the colleges. Then it was a three day event. The second day, the first day was like a meet and greet with a dinner. You get to sit down with all the colleges and talk to them. How many do you think were there, colleges, approximately? There was 28, I think. I could be wrong, but I think there's 28 of them. Mm -hmm. I think there's a scheduled 30, but Mm that's due to whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But I think there's 28 that showed up. So meet and greet day one. Yep. Uh, Different schools. Day two was, what was it? Day two, man, John Blank, was, oh, they give us, they have our name tags and they uh give us a card and before you go to the combine you have to they give you a list with all the colleges and you write down what colleges you'd like to meet with mm. so that's what day two was was a the morning was you meet with your colleges the, there's five of them that you get to meet with and you get to go around to each one of them they would take you out they take you out on a boat and do they we were supposed to do like boating seals but when we went there, it just so happened to cold front blew in, and mm. the mm. second day of the event, we, there was like thirty mile an hour winds. Oh, wow. So they they kind of shout out to them for bass. They were kind of running all over the place because they had to rechange everything they had had going on because them blew it all away. They had these little targets out in the water that we'd be flipping and stuff oh, in. Okay. So looking, at, we were right on Wheeler Lake, and looking out on uh, uh, Lake, there's white caps, and looking out there. There's every bit of four or five footers. Wow. You know, wow. So it's good call on them for not letting us go <laughs> out. But they did kind of suck because we were kind of confined in to a little space. But after we got to meet all of the colleges that we wanted to pick with, then there's there's four events, three events. Uh, the first event was longest cast. Then the second event was uh, the it was not tying, or they called it. What did they call it? Um, I don't remember, but anyway, it was you. Uh, you do a line to lure knot, then you do a line to line knot, mm. and after that was an accuracy where you walked up on a boat and you, they had, I think it was twelve targets that you get to flip on, and you have to all of them were timed. And you had to do it under three minutes. And you're on the boat. On you're the pitching boat. Off, pitching you're, flipping off the boat. Yeah, they got the boat on land. Mm. And they got these targets out. I think the closest one was probably. 
10 yards and the furthest one was probably 20 yards. Wow. The closest one was my hardest one. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> it was. And when you say target too, we're looking at uh, They're probably the size of a trash can lid. Okay. Okay. And you, I don't understand why the closest one was my hardest one, but maybe because nerves or something was getting to now, me. Now, do you get to use your own tackle? No, it was, they get to, okay. the event was sponsored by Abu Garcia. So they, Abu Garcia brought a bunch of rod and reel combos for us to use. So that was a little different using something I've never used before. Mm -hmm. So that was a little different. We got like 30 seconds to dial them in the way we like them. Wow. It, it was really cool how it all was laid out. Then the final day, or still on day two, you have your time for your time for them all. And it's like a, they give you a sheet of paper that has each event on it. And I started on the longest cast. And so we were all in a line. There's there's like 80 kids there, 80 or so competitors, and they broke it up into f four groups. I was group one or group four. I don't really remember. And uh, so how did it go? There's a uh, like a little station for the kids that, since there's only three, there's four. Uh, there's another one for the kids that they could like, this practice and do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Then we started off with uh, longest cast. So we there's I think there's thirty in each uh, thirty or so in each group. So we were in our line. They had this big platform that was mm -hmm. probably look it almost looked like the back of a truck bed, but it's wrapped and it's really cool looking. So we stood on that and. They had these like a, almost looked like a football field the way they had it marked out it's pretty cool looking they had like each uh they had it by like every 10 yards they had marked so i went up and cast they give you three chances and you have to there's it's probably 20 or 30 foot wide that is your boundaries and you have to stay in that my first cast was a bomb cast they well they, they gave us like a spook with no hooks on it something really aerodynamic and so my first cast, I casted like 59 yards wow. and dead centered in the field. My second cast, I cast out of bounds in my third cast. <laughs> and after that, it's like, oh man, I started getting nervous. My nerves were getting to me. So my next cast, was like, you know what? My first cast was pretty good. So let's just do this one normal. So I cast that and that one actually was the exact same spot my first one went. So I ended up, I was second in longest cast. Then after longest cast, we went to not tying. I tied, they gave us a hook that we tied, we have to, a knot of our choice. I did the polymer knot, then we did, they gave us a line to line, which I still, I have a, such a hard time remembering the my leader. I can't remember either, I just yeah. tied. Yeah. Union, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's names, the but, Albright knot, I'm not 100% yeah. sure. It's one I've always tied, so it's, I tried, I was gonna do the FG knot, but <laughs> since it was timed, I knew I didn't yeah, take an hour. Plus yeah, I knew I didn't have done. enough time to do all that. But I went up there. Both of those knots held. So I think I was that one. I'm not sure. I think I was second in that one. Then after that, we went to our accuracy. Then I got up there, started flipping. I missed missed the first one. Then hit all the rest of them. Then I came back and sitting on the boat. The control motor is deployed, which I knew was going to mess with me just the way I'd flip. I, f I flipped real low to the ground, and I got to this one target three times in a row. I hit the control motor. Like, oh, All right, so this is starting to get in my head. So, all right, we'll leave this one alone <laughs> and keep going and come back to it. I got all those, and I came back to it, and I ended up finishing second or third in that one, and ended up finishing second overall That's in the awesome. event. That is pretty much second out of 80, yep. 80 plus, yeah. So how many opportunities do you have to do each each activity? Is it one and done? It's you get your time for each one, and for longest cast you get three casts. Okay. And if they're all out of bounds, well, it sucks for you. <laughs> then the your time for the not the skills test, then your time for the uh, accuracy. Whether it takes you three minutes to hit all twelve targets, or you, you have if you can hit all the it's they're going for the, uh all targets in fastest time for all of them pretty much now is this something too would you i know i've, I've done it but and I, I don't compete a whole lot but did you find yourself when you're younger 
uh practicing absolutely absolutely like, and where would you do that would you do that in your living room in the garage or? uh i we had this long hallway and mama always busted me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'd be hitting the walls and stuff i always grabbed one of her nice coffee cups and that's nice. what really got her upset uh -huh. so i'd be gun coffee cups we also had a pond by my house and that's where i really learned how to skip and flip and stuff like that and being on the water every day that helps too do they have a skipping portion no but i wish they did yeah, I was going to yeah. say. And it's a great thing they didn't have one for spin, spinning rods because <laughs> I, I would have fluked on that one. Oh, my goodness, dude. So much. Um, so then with this, what would you consider was the hardest, the easiest, and what is a third category of which what you wish they would have tested? Um, The easiest? None of them are easy with the conditions. Like I said, we had. Not as hard. Yeah, they, none of them, we, with the conditions we had, I mean, there's every bit of 30 mile an hour winds. I mean, mm -hmm. there's times where you're getting blown forward or, so mother nature definitely didn't be nice on that one. So the longest cast was probably, was the hardest one because it was more of, it was more of timing and had to wait on a good opportunity for the wind or catch the wind right and let that take your bait yeah. further. So that one was definitely, for me, it was the hardest one just because you had to time it and all that stuff. But the easiest one for me was probably the skills doing the knot tying. Really? Okay. Yep. yep. Now, is it because there was like the time variation of it? Because I would, that would, to me, it's so crazy. Like something you do a thousand times, you pitch and flip. But then all of a sudden, there's a guy with a clipboard staring at you. He's like, yeah. holy crap. It's yeah. got hot all of a sudden. It's a little weird. I've, I used to shoot competitive archery. So I've always, I've always loved the pressure. Mm -hmm. So that, that kind of, I liked it. I liked the pressure. It's just something. That's why I do tournament fishing. I've, yeah. That feeling you get, and that's why I do a, that competition. Yeah, I'm a very yeah. competitive person. It definitely changes when you're competing. And it's yeah. interesting to think of like you think the combine about doing you know as many the bench press at 225 as possible, or you're, or you're running. You're getting tangible, quantifiable information, and you're now taking this towards the fishing realm. What are some other things that if you were if you were king for a day? What are some other skills off the top of your head that you think would be important to judge to, to understand that this is how important an angler is or how good an angler is? Um, I'm not for certain, but I think there's like a graph portion, like electronics. But since the conditions didn't allow us to go out on the water, I don't mm. think I think I think that was one of them. But we never got to it because they the conditions were so mm. bad we couldn't go out in the water. OK, so definitely like graphing. And another one would be really good is boat skills, which mm. they were supposed to do boat skills, but we just couldn't go out on the water. Okay. Now, yeah, no, boat skills makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yep. I understand you know how to do this safely. Docking and yeah, handling docking. water. Yeah. I would also think like maybe <clears throat> wiring and being able to take care and troubleshoot your boat. Yeah. You know, I know a lot of the newer the newer pros out here, they don't have those skills anymore. And yep. they're always like, well, I'm just going to mm. send it to my my crew to fix it. It's like, yeah, mm. but I think that would be a skill if you want to get a scholarship mm. or something. I, I don't know. Something Absolutely. To be able to do. It's amazing, too, how much it's grown. I mean, I know we talked about before, but, you know, being able, you could be in elementary school or middle school or high school, and yeah. you can now fish competitively in, in high school level. And then yep. the collegiate, how it's just blown up. And then, you know, so now that there is this, I'm sure, you know, being the first one, they're going to improve yeah. on it. And it's, uh, it's, it's a, it's an extremely great opportunity for like, I had no plan on going to college mm -hmm. until I made it to nationals and see, well, I made it this far, let's go a little further Then mm -hmm. going to there. That really got me because there's, uh, I got three colleges that I'm looking at that are in interested in me. So was, without that, without the combine, I wouldn't be going to college. It's almost it's like it's open new doors. That's yeah, kind of it's open doors. Like, Absolutely, open yeah, yep. new doors for you that that you otherwise, like you said, yeah. may not have had. And I think the interesting thing too, or what I love about the fishing industry is there's not just one pathway. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, we talked before about you know if if you if what you want to do uh, with your future requires that college degree, then by all means go to college. And this is kind of a you know thing that you know for so many years you had to go to college to be successful. At least that's what they told you. And that's just not the case uh, for one. And number two, like if you want to fish competitively in college, you you can have the opportunity to yep. do that. But the yep. the flip side of that is you don't have to go that path, no, uh, the college route. You can actually go, you know, the open route. Yep. So um, let's talk a little bit too about, you know, you're here now. Um, you, you're still, you're going to finish up your senior year. You got yes, sir. two more qualifiers um, uh, for your high school and then, then you're, you're finished. 
Uh, but even before you graduate, uh, tell us a little bit about what your your plans are for now and, and into the future. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna fish all the tournaments I can. I didn't. I just registered for the Northern Opens. So that's that's gonna be fun. Mm -hmm. Getting with the big boys and now, are you doing this as a boater or non-boater? Just to make sure. Boater. We're wrong. Okay, boater. Boater. Yeah. So that that's that's gonna be different. So you just registered for that. Yeah, I registered yesterday while I was in the tree stand. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. And that's going to be the northern? Yep. Northern division. Yep. We're going to hit the James River is our first one, and it's in April. Then we go to Lake Uni Unida, Oneida in July. Then we go to the Upper Chesapeake in August. So there's only one place where you can't be in six inches of water. <laughs> right? Well, here lately, it's been looking pretty good for largemouth, so I think I can. There's grass there, so I'm yeah. right home. I was gonna do the centrals, but when I saw the schedule for the northerns, two tidal waters, I mean, that's that's right up my alley. Mm -hmm. The only thing we're missing is Potomac River. <laughs> well, and, and that's the thing too, like with, with the way the opens are, and I know people have well, have heated uh, arguments about that. It, you only have to really get good at a couple to qualify. Yeah. Now we can get in the whole like debate of like you know being well rounded and all that other stuff yep. but it's like yeah if you cut your teeth at just the james okay that's literally what a third of the schedule done right there if you qualify good yep. there and now you have the chesapeake so it, it does suit your wheelhouse very well the yep. schedule i've never been on the chesapeake but at the end of the day tidal water is tidal water mm -hmm. yeah it, so they say yeah i mean i've done two or three college tournaments there and we also followed aaron martins when he did his victory there yeah it, it's it's very unique because you have the estuary factor, but then it's a bowl. It's just this giant flat bowl of three feet, maybe four feet of water, all grass. Versus yeah. when you're fishing the James, the Potomac, you have a creek you can run into. Yep. And so what am I getting at? It's just, it's very weather dependent. Like mm -hmm. if the wind blows, you can be screwed very quickly yeah. because <clears throat> everyone fishes this bowl. And that's where you see like when people win these multi-day events is because they found some weird creek yeah. in the middle of nowhere that's that's safe from the weather. And there's also a smallmouth factor that's, that's interesting yeah. that you'll see guys that don't necessarily win, but if you get up on the Susquehanna at the right time of year, you can survive on With small smallmouth. Yep. Yeah, and that's what actually my brother and I, we, we did that. We, we focused largemouth day one. And once we knew we were safe, we just fished smallmouth day two because we knew we wouldn't win, but we would ca we would make it to the championship by mm -hmm. just filling out a limit of smallies. Mm -hmm. So it's a very unique fishery, definitely. So how are you going to be approaching? Um, I don't know off the top of my head, like the the out of bounds times for the opens. How are you going to be approaching? Or have you even thought about that yet about the, the schedule? Uh, I haven't really thought about it. I mean, I'm going to hit it like I hit all my other tournaments. Just mm -hmm. Throttle high and let her fly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, I mean, the James, I'm not as worried on because I've been on it a bunch of times. So I kind of a little mm -hmm. familiar with it, but Oneida, that's, that's definitely the new one. So mm -hmm. I'm going to, I think I'm not for sure. I still have to look. I'm definitely going to practice as much as I can on Oneida. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, and then make sure you get to know the Chesapeake because yeah. it is a dangerous running place. It's absolutely. Very weird. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's with all tidal waters. Really. Yeah. Yeah. But there's number of times i've seen a lower unit come off on the potomac yeah it, it happens especially yep. if you're from out of town so are you going to be giving it more pre-fishing than because i know there's like two schools of thought there's a people that just show up and do the regular whatever i'm 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 definitely gonna pre-fish that's it, it makes me feel comfortable <clears throat> to each is his own and that's the way that's why i'm gonna go i'm gonna a minimum i'm gonna try to get myself at least three days if mm -hmm. i can if it'd be nice if you give myself two weeks i'll take two weeks yeah. too. <laughs> just to figure out as much as i can it's it's definitely different not really the tournament part of it just well everything else around it yeah I mean, this is not this different is not high school yeah this is it's, it's like, ain't well, this ain't high school I mean, you're what 19 years old 18 Eight, he's 18 years old yeah. so i mean he my god he's going into and you fish you know collegiately and and um great story there too I need to interview you sometime but <laughs> starting the program at shannon university i mean that's you've been there and done that but to be 18 and already be you yeah, know, registered going, in yeah, the open, doing the big leagues, having you know college opportunity potentially, and beyond. That's just incredible. And yeah. then taking it with stride, and but also just you know going. You've always, you always have seemed to pre fish and mm -hmm. get yourself on the water yep. and prepare. 
you know, going into the tournament. I think that's, you know, one of the reasons you've had success is, is that preparation going into it. Absolutely. Time on the water is everything. So what, uh, as far as college too, and he can speak to this, but, mm -hmm. um, what are you, are you for sure going to do that? Going to go that route you think, or are you going to wait and see, or is that something? I'm, I'm definitely gonna go to college. Oh, good. Definitely going to go to college. What happens <laughs> after that, once I make it in there, that's to mm -hmm. be current to be determined yet, mm -hmm. but I'm definitely gonna go to college. Have you narrowed down your options? Narrowed down to two. Down to two. Oh my goodness, we need to have a big reveal then. Do a live yeah, stream. That's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, I got a visit with one, the first of December, then I'm setting up another visit for the other one, so. That's awesome. So let's play that some hypotheticals, because awesome. I'm, you know, I, I started with a podunk college, and we went up against the big colleges. Mm -hmm. You pick college A. Do you automatically walk on onto the fishing team? And then on, on top of that, it's a double double part. Do you take your own boat or are they going to tell you you have to fish out of theirs? Like, I'm so, and, taking my own boat. Okay. The one college said I'll do what it takes to get you on our team. And that the one college is, I don't want to say it's a smaller college, but they're new. They're getting a newer mm, team. A they, newer program. A newer program. Okay. They've always had a team, but the school is actually jumping on board behind them, which really cool mm -hmm. hear that shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, so that's good man. yeah i think they're starting to see too i think early mm -hmm. on you just nobody knew how, how that big you this could, was yeah I mean, yep. still people that don't know yep. that you know this is something that's that's there and available and, absolutely yeah. so, so i could see that's definitely a, a benefit um you know mm -hmm. one thing when i when we formed the club and we had people from i think it was um no oh, crud not alabama there's another school in alabama sorry guys um that there's like well the benefit you have is it's just you and your brother. So you get to go to every single tournament and crack out possibly yeah. a win. And they're talking like, well, with what we were doing, maybe it was LSU that we were talking to. Anyway, the point is they're like, we had to like have preliminary rounds just to make it to the mm. squad to then go out. Yeah. And, and it point. really opened my eyes up. Like there, there's both sides of the coin where we don't have the funding, but we're at the forefront of every opportunity. Whereas if you go to a massive school, how many other people are you competing with just to be able to get to a tournament? Yeah. And, and that's something maybe that goes into your decision, but, is that kind of how like it is where like some schools you don't just automatically get to go to the Bassmaster like college tournament? Yeah, you have to the, the one school I've been talking to, there's they do they have their own tournaments and there's a point system. Okay. If, like just like all your other tournaments, mm -hmm. if you win you can go or if you win points or something you can go. How many teams are they talking on that particular school, <sighs> do you think? I'm not for certain. Mm -hmm. They I'm not, I'm not 100% yeah, sure. That's fine. Um and you don't have to give names or anything, but it was just, it's just a very interesting thing. Like when you think of that, like, yeah, you, you, if you didn't know this information and you mm. didn't actually have this knowledge base of like, you think, look, I'm going to go to the school A and you get there you're like, oh, now I have to fish 50 other tournaments just to have a chance to actually. Yeah. Break the, yeah, yeah. 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 Almost break, like break, break the line up. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, it's just <clears throat> something that people should know when you're making these decisions. Absolutely. It's, it's not, different. you're not just going to college and you're going to fish all the, you have to work, you have to maintain a good GPA, you got to, what, <laughs> when I was going into this, I always knew grades are everything, school is mm -hmm. everything, but, you know, I'm, I'm not really, I've never been really that fan of the schooling part of it, mm -hmm. but GPA and maintaining good grades and all that is, that's, that'll make or break you. I mean, they'll, you have, you don't have, you didn't make a good, you don't have a good grade in this class, so you can't fish. And so that, that's, I'm not really that worried about it. But that's that's another thing I look into. You mm -hmm. gotta you gotta stay. School is still overall. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Then well, but fishing, fishing's what is it's crazy. Fishing is the reason I'm going to college, mm -hmm. which probably isn't the greatest way I should look at it. It's okay because it's yeah. giving you an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Give fishing you an opportunity is that you normally would not have yeah, taken. Advantage fishing of. is taking me to college. Yeah. Yep, and in college, and we've talked about this uh, privately, like this shows you the other parts of the industry. Like, you know, we, it's not just about how many mm -hmm. fish you catch, but now you can strengthen your marketing, yep. your mm -hmm. business. Side. Absolutely. The mm -hmm. idea of like, if, and I heard this from, you know, shout out to like Bass Talk Live. They had uh, an attorney on talking about if you fish tournaments, you should open up your own LLC for tax purposes because mm -hmm. you have to pay on the winnings. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think about that at the first. Like, yeah, that's right. And so you learn the financial mm -hmm. side. Like, how do I make my dollars go further? 
And so hopefully that's what college will also do is you'll, yep. you'll improve your skills on the water, mm-hmm. but you'll you'll round out your skills off the water. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know if you remember, but I remember talking to Jeremy last year, and I don't know, it might have been after the Gaston tournament or whatever, and I'm pretty sure you won that one. But I, I asked him, I said, what are you going to do when you grow up? And he kind of smiled, he said, I'm a fish. And yeah. I, and I said, that's, that's great, you know. <laughs> but uh, what are you going to do if you, you know, you got to have a job, you know, what are you going to do? He said, I'm a fish. And <laughs> I said, well, if that doesn't work, like, what's your backup plan? And he he said, I'm, I'm going to fish. You know, which I love that. I love that though because he's got one plan but in saying that i think what you're learning too we got a chance to go down and talk to john cruz uh before the national tournament last year and pick his brain a little bit but you know and you've often alluded to that as well and how he has really set himself up not just as a professional angler but Mm -hmm. has a business degree and has missile baits and and is using that you know as, as another revenue source to help fund you know his fishing and so uh, what what are you going to study? You know, uh, I'm going to do forestry. All right, good forestry. That's great. I thought about, you know, the business side of it. I'm I still part of me still wants to do advertisement because mm-hmm. you got to be able to promote mm-hmm. yourself. That's right. But I'm I'm definitely going to do forestry. Mm-hmm. Just outdoorsy and mm-hmm. be easy yeah. easier for me to keep up with it. No, that's good. You can minor like in a marketing or something like yep. that. But yep. marketing, um, Google. This is boring, but it helped me out. Google advertising, so you understand how AdSense revenue works. Yeah. So if you have to negotiate a deal, you understand, like, if I get this wrap on my truck, this is how many views I assume I get. This is what my worth is. So things yeah. like that. It's boring, but you need it. Mm-hmm. Also, video editing classes. Yeah. Sometimes the colleges offer it. And, dude, to be able to understand how to work a editing software so you don't have to pay someone to edit your fishing videos, boom, mm-hmm. now you just save a little bit of yep. money, and you can put your flavor of it of your brand. So that's something else to possibly I think. Into. That part's the only reason I haven't started a YouTube channel yet. I've always, part of me wanted to start one, but then you got the technology part of it. And that's definitely not my strong suit. We need suit. to talk after this so I can help, <laughs> you, help you with that. But the editing parts, I mean, I've, you know, I have a little GoPro edit and I do little small videos that I'll do. But like when it comes to a full on video, that's, that's still what gets me. Well, that's the thing too. I think in in college, you know, you're gonna there's gonna be classes there that you can, or people that you run into and you meet. You know, it's mm-hmm. it is something that um, it's something you definitely add to it, and you can learn that. Um, knowing that it's a weakness, let's say, yeah. you know, in this, it has nothing to do with fishing, but has to do with marketing yourself. Yeah. Um, is something you can definitely, and the fact that you're dabbling in it is good too, though. So uh, that's something that you can definitely you know improve on. Um, you know moving forward and and that'll come that'll probably come with time yeah, absolutely because again you because of fishing you now have an opportunity mm-hmm. to go you, you know to, to school to college yep. yeah you know get a degree and then see what happens beyond that and so while you're there though you know that's where you can kind of sharpen your saw absolutely on that, that end 100%. of it too yep. that will I'm big on too doing something that you're going to be able to use in the future mm-hmm. that'll be practical and applicable. Yeah, you know. Yep. And so uh, it'll be it'll be I'm anxious to see you know where that path goes for you and, and where you end up. Yeah, me you too. Know, <laughs> and I think importantly too, knowing too that's not. I think when you're young, it's like it's got to be the the right decision right now. Yeah. And you want to do your homework and you want to yeah. weigh your options, but life is a journey. It is. I it mean, really there's is. different, again, there's on ramps and off ramps and it's, it's different pathways and it's not the end all. So you're going to make that decision and you're going to go and it could be a good decision or not, but either way you're going to go. And that, that just like this to this point has opened up doors and opportunities. Yep. That's going to open up further opportunities and doors and you just keep moving in that direction. Uh, you know, you'll be successful whenever you decide to do. It's that kind of journey, yep. the path you're going to take. Yep, it's absolutely. kind of anxious to see what's going to happen. So... Going to the college thing, and this kind of, <clears throat> sorry, um, kind of piggybacking off our last uh, conversation. Looking at where I'm, a, I'm going to speculate where I think you're going to go to college, and the areas of the country that is a little bit different than the Potomac River. Absolutely. And so, I like to think of this more of like from a baseball setting. You got to pitch in uh, San Diego, where it was about 500 feet all around, and your pitchers is amazing. And now you're going to go pitch in the Yankee Stadium where people can hit balls out left and right and people laugh at a 20 pound sack. Whereas 20 pound sacks around here guarantee you probably a win down yeah. there. You're looking at 30. Like, and th- I know that plays into your game of go big and go home, but what, what ways are you going to, how can you improve your game here that will translate over there? And we talked about, I don't know if this was on or off, 
that you can look at the other episode, which is about Elfwife and Frederick and Holiday. So you can learn enough about how to fish blueback herring in the Carolinas where you have an idea. You're not gonna die on the vine if you fish a tournament. Yeah. There. That's good. What what ways do you think you're gonna try to polish your game up before college and how? Time on the water. Time on the water to me is everything. Mm -hmm. And I can't really say how like what I'm gonna do now to make me better down there, but really time on the water. Mm -hmm. Time on the water is key. Yeah. It's a great answer. Mm -hmm. It really is. We heard that in Travis's yeah. podcast too about you know just learning and i think neil might have said the time in the water yeah because like and there's parts like when you're fishing the river you got to visually you got to get out there if you want to learn um forward facing sonar yep. you, you gotta, gotta get out there gotta get out there and mm -hmm. do it um if there's so after fishing the tva um <clears throat> and so you got the tva we got the blue back here and we got the title small mouth i guess is the one that you're going to be fishing there with the opens what other i guess what other waters would you want to have the most practice on if you had to pick close your eyes i can fish three places to get experience right now what would they be definitely be one of them would be definitely in florida florida's one okay florida's one northern uh like small mouthy waters. small mouth like the great lakes yeah i mean might as well go out on the ocean <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh and i've always wanted to fish a western lake me Just too completely yeah completely <laughs> different completely different mm -hmm. yeah the florida thing i think is going to suit you very well it's that it's really it's so weird if you look at the stats that guys that are good on the potomac survive a lot of times yeah. on the floridian places yep. the oceans of the north are something different it's a different type yep. of animal out there yep and yeah <laughs> but it, it truly is but it seems like here lately i mean all of our major tournaments are, are going there so mm -hmm. you, you're you're going to be on it sooner or later so and that's the other thing like i speculate too when i'm should be working but i'm not it's like an issue i see where they always go the same bodies of water and how that's a positive and a negative so an example is we talked about the james earlier you know if you are a hell of a stick on the james like you you gotta what do you gotta do crack a top three and then don't suck the next two like and so i think there is a positive and negative there where if you live around this area you can fish two places very well and you can make the opens but that doesn't mean you're necessarily an over well an mm -hmm. over well-rounded angler and i think that's interesting like why did you pick the opens versus let's call it the flw back in the day we got to fish the costas and i, and I know bat the bass band is great not to get me wrong but out of curiosity like w why did you pick the opens and it's okay if you don't have an answer i know it's well and this is something you were struggling i mean i can remember before talking to you you weren't sure yeah. Like you were kind of, he was struggling with that mm -hmm. decision. And so you're torn. And yeah. so you, you was, made a decision. But why why yeah. were you torn? Just walk through the thought process. <clears throat> the financial part of it is why I was really torn between which one I want to go. I mean, I've been saving, I've been working full time, still going to school and working for almost three years now. So I've I made this account just for entry fees, really. Is that right? Yep. Wow. For the so so when you say financial, are you telling if you had to pick and choose between going um the Costas versus the Bass Opens and you had that decision, you picked the Bass Opens because of financial, like they're cheaper or like, or just, like walk through that decision. I went to the opens just because there's that chance that the end goal of <laughs> all this is to make it to the Elite Series. That that's that's the final goal. That's that's the plan. Five years from now, I want to see myself in the open or in the elite series. That, you know the that's next great. question: Why? Why, Why? The elites? I just I, yeah. That's Let's throw it in there with every to other me. Podcast. That was that, that's, that's topic. nothing against all the other yeah. organ organizations, but that's I mean, growing up as as long as I can remember, I mean, seeing Rick Klein and all them people, mm -hmm. I want to do that. I want to be there. That's so that's cool. that's what I'm gonna do. Have you ever thought about fishing the Federation or anything like that? I, I was it tra I'm sorry, is it Travis Luger, his mm -hmm. dad? He fishes the Federation, right? Is it the Federation? No, he was fishing the uh, Bass Nation, Virginia Bass Nation. Bass Nation, Nation. okay, I'm sorry. Here, classic. here in the last, really, last two years, I've always kind of fished tournaments, but here in the last two years, I've really expanded my tournaments. So I'm, I'm going to fish as many tournaments as I can, and the Opens was just another set of tournaments to fish. Granted, they're the biggest ones I've fished so far, you know, I, the nationals for the high school is a big, a giant tournament, but you're going to, I mean, you got the elite pros, mm -hmm. you're, you're going against the big boys. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that and I guess my mindset, the way I think, 
in my where I think I'm at. I think I'm ready. So we'll find out when the games. And that's a natural process too. Yeah. I've heard Nolan Miner talk about that. Who went from it was that you know I think uh, second in the nation. I think first in Virginia, fished at West Virginia University, and then even going making that step from collegiate to the opens. You know, you do those first couple. You're thinking, now I'm I'm, I'm with the big boys now. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. not, yep. and it's it's a level thing. It is a level thing. But uh, have you dealt with a angler before? <clears throat> no, that's that's gonna be new. <laughs> that's, that's gonna be new. Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> Which nothing uh, against that. I mean, no, it's just like well, yeah, that's another fishing step. like team tournaments. But that's that's a little different. You have yeah. a relationship with them. Yeah, but. I'm I'm really excited for it. You, I think you're going to be fine because of your personality. I've been yeah, just really yeah. impressed with his personality. Just your rapport, like you're. He's just he's he's a very even keel, um, but but speaks well. And, uh, and does well with the, the young. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I've had co anglers before fishing the ABA, BFL stuff. Like you have great ones, great ones. However, you get those that are less than ideal yeah mm. and because of your age and i wasn't as young yeah. i wasn't as young as you when i started fishing the bfls there are some that think this is a kid mm -hmm. and i'm gonna push him around that is a good point like your age you yeah. know might, yeah. might be a challenge well, for some others not for you and yeah. that's something you know you what you have to have that conversation i think mm -hmm. bubba caffey told me that stuff he said you gotta literally when you get in the boat before you idle here's the deal mm -hmm. if we don't follow this i'm gonna turn around we're gonna cut the day early period because mm -hmm. you've got to have that conversation about what's allowed mm -hmm. so they don't because it is your entry fee you're putting yeah. more on the line than them. yeah um, but i don't know that's just like something that to make sure on that big stage the co is not what you're thinking about dealing with it's the fish yeah i mean i haven't really thought about it but it's it's definitely something that's there and i'm i'm excited to i mean you, you can always you, you definitely learn more yeah you're Learning is everything, but mm -hmm. you get to meet new people, make new friends, mm -hmm. and so. And like you said too, you can learn that way too. I was reading yep. a little bit on Jared Martin, and he'll be coming on too. And and uh, he talked about that on when when mm -hmm. it dried up day two or three. You know, he kind of leaned on co angle a little bit, and they went to another spot. So, you know, having the personality oh, yeah. that that you can you can actually yeah. learn, but also you know use each other Absolutely. to uh, have success. So, I got two more. Um, <clears throat> why financially jump and just want your, your thought process uh, and say like, I want to go as a, as a non boater and be able to be in these guys and watch them or do the Marshall program versus being like, I'm just going to go balls to the wall in, which is fine either way. I'm just curious. Like what? Talk to me. I've thought about doing Marshall, but I just, I just haven't, but I'm, I'm that person. I'm going to, you want the rod in your hand. Yeah. I'm going to, I want the rod in yeah. my hand. I'm going to jump in go or, as deep yeah. as I can. Or even doing the co-angler for the opens versus. I did. I did think about that just because it is definitely cheaper, but it's it's it is the same, but it's not the same. Mm -hmm. I like I like to be in control. I guess. No, yeah. 100%. I guess that's why I did it. But and I'm also I'm that person. I want to go full throttle. I'm mm -hmm. doing it or I'm not doing it at all. So I guess that's why I jumped into the opens. That and my age, doing it this young, I guess feel like I can prove something. Maybe I I can like I mean. Jacob Wheeler. I mean, he started mm -hmm. at this age. Maybe I. I guess. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Where well, I'm but here's the thing too. The yeah, good yeah. thing is you. You've thought it out. Yeah. You've yeah. thought about it. I mean, you're not just making a rash decision. You no, definitely. I mean, I've, I've, I've watched you kind of wrestle with it, and you know, I talk talk to you, and you're, you're the good thing too. You're coming today with more confidence. Again, just because you are growing, even though it's been a short time, like mm -hmm. you are you're where you need to be i mean you're not and that's and that's the thing too don't let anybody ever you're going to do what you're going to do and don't let that don't let a question deter yeah, you, you yeah. from what yeah, you're absolutely. you know uh because make or break it mm -hmm. it's going to be ultimately right now it's going to be on you yeah, i mean that's, absolutely you're making your decision you're going to live with it and and you're going to go with it win or lose uh but i think more importantly i just keep going back to the fact that you're gaining so much experience and knowledge and information that mm -hmm. And guys my age, I mean, we, you didn't have that opportunity no, back in the day, you know, and you've kind of forged your own path too in a school that didn't even have a team. So that too is Ideal. is pretty <laughs> cool. But, you know, now now because of all that though, and where we're at today is, you know, the groundwork has already been laid. And so you're you're kind of walking through those doors, but you're doing it at a very, very early age, which yeah. is which is good though. Cause like I say, I think you're <laughs> you're stepping out there, but you know, see what happens. Right. You and, know? and these are the questions you're gonna get hit with. <clears throat> 
spoilers, you know, once you start throwing championships and stuff. And, and so it's getting used to like, sometimes you don't know the answer, which yeah. is fine. And cause I'm going to hit you with one more. Um, and you're going to hear this a bunch more in your, in your, in your career when we see on the big stage, what do you want out of this within reason for these three tournaments? What is success? What is failure? And what is you can lead, walk away from being like, yeah, that was, that's good enough. Like, and I know answer one for door one is, yeah, I win a tournament. I, I finish in points. That's good. So then let's go to the other ones. Like, what's that reasonable one that's below that? I want to put my name out there. Put your name out there? I want to okay. put my name out there. I want to, and I want to prove to myself that I can do it. What I know I can do it. And you don't have to have an answer to that, but it's something I think about when you think about these guys, like you finish 10th in the points, but you don't make it. Yeah. Like when you don't cash a check, but for some reason you finish, you finish high because you can finish yeah. high without cashing a check. Do you look at that as a failure? You're like, oh, God damn. You know, I can't even buy a beer yet. And I finished middle of the pack. But yeah, you can put a positive. Yeah. Spinner, I mean, like, you take it and you, you just take it and go further with it. You, you let that, I don't want to say a failure if you finish in the, lower in the points but you're you're right there at it you take that and you do you consider that a failure would you consider that a positive i'm i've grown up if if you're not on top you're the ricky bobby first yeah last. Uh, if, if first you ain't first, first you're last i mean that that's that's kind of how <laughs> maybe it's not a good thing that i've kind of grown up that way in fishing tournaments maybe that's why i fish tournaments but it's just the way i've kind of taught myself and shoot for the fences Either I make it or I don't, and if I don't make it, do it again and try harder. Go I harder. I say, I think it for you. What I'm learning from you, I think it kind of fuels. Yeah, it fuels, <laughs> fuels your flame a little bit, and it's going to make you go harder. And I think you learn. I think you'll learn from that. Absolutely. And, then, and if, yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I mean, I think it's great that you put it out there. And yeah, and since I'm not fishing the open, so I don't <clears> care <throat> if they hate me. Um, I think the open structure is a little bit of BS. And so I don't think you should look at it that if I don't qualify, that is considered a failure. So Absolutely. It's the same thing is if you're a mm -hmm. pitcher or if you're a hitter, if you finish in the top 30 in batting average mm -hmm. for 2000 people, well, mm -hmm. that's deemed a failure because you're not three, the top three. Mm -hmm. So I do think that is bullshit. And I don't want you to say that so you get in trouble, but I will. And so I don't want you to look at it that, yeah, if I finish, 40th out of a thousand guys that are all pros that are mm -hmm. sponsored that's a failure like holy shit dude that is nowhere near a failure mm -hmm. the, i do think there's a sentence structure where like if they make you feel that way i know jake payne finished like two points out uh for btl bass talk live he finished two points out of qualifying and so he's been thinking like he's a failure now if you finish six overall you're not a failure if you finish 30 out of a thousand you're that's really freaking good in any other sport you would be considered getting a massive check right so keep those expectations correct that even though i might not qualify if i take a swing at this thing and i'm finishing middle of the pack as day one that's mm -hmm. a freaking mm -hmm. you pop champagne and have a yeah, cold that's absolutely a big freaking deal that and just sitting here and still thinking about the question you asked me <clears throat> earlier experience experience is another mm -hmm. reason that's right yeah the more experience the better that's yeah. right yep it is and Unless you finish mm -hmm. dead last, you always beat someone. So yeah. always keep that in mind and yep. grow from that. You, you learn more from when you fail than yeah. when you win. And, and having, you know, and it's funny because <coughs> I don't have it here today. But so uh, the one time I tried to go, I won, was it like eight grand the first three tournaments? I won the first one, the ABA, and then I killed it in the BF, the, the next BFL. The tournament after that, I finished 30 out of 50. But me and my co-angler ended up catching, I think, 60 keepers between us. That was the most fun day of my life. And on my keychain uh, at home, I have a rattle trap that the paint was worn off because we caught something. Mm -hmm. We had the most fun ever. The tournaments mm -hmm. I cashed massive checks in, I think I hooked six, caught five. That was it. Mm -hmm. Stressful, miserable. It was a fun experience. But it made me really psychoanalyze what success and failure is because mm -hmm. on paper, my success was those tournaments. But I don't relive those days as much as that day that mm -hmm. we were just absolutely smoking them. They're all the same size, but we were smoking them. Mm -hmm. We were on a pattern that was specific and it was good. The thing was the fish weren't the right size. Mm -hmm. And so when you go there and you start fishing these higher levels, it's you understanding what is success and failure because success is I throw a jig, catch five bites, but I just randomly walk into it. They might have you think that's success because you finish high. But that's different than you were dialed into a T on a pattern yeah. 
and you could close your eyes and you could smoke them all day and you finish in the middle of the pack. Well, to me, you were more successful because you dialed in that lake compared to the guy that did luck into five. And yeah. that does happen. And I feel mm -hmm. like that's one issue with fishing is kind of balancing that out. But you mentally approaching when you leave the water that, you know what? Today, I got lucky with the five. The other day, it's like, dude, I was freaking, we were we were on them. We were locked. And that is what I want as an angler. Yeah. That means my skill to be able to understand fish behavior, that's what gets you to the next level. But that's my rant on that. No, no, I think that's right. And I think the long game, I think that's what you're looking at too. You know you're in route end goal and it's a long game yeah. and it doesn't matter you can go out and do a total flop but you're 18 years old yeah and the experience that you're gaining you know gets you you know closer to your your end game yeah. and that that long game that you're going to play as long as you take that same approach um of learning from mistakes and gaining experience and learning you know even if you you fail you know you'll 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 go far absolutely and, and even if you don't make it you know, you'll still get further than if you were to set your goal yeah. lower, right? Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, that's kind of how you want to look at it. Yeah. And in this sport, it's it's the sport of losing. Mm -hmm. You're you're gonna oh, yeah. you're gonna lose more than you win. That's just that's that's the name of the game. And that's what pushes that's what pushes me to go to keep fishing them. Because well, if I lose this one, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fish the next one to prove myself. That's right. Mm -hmm. To something, prove something that. And you might lose that one. You might lose the next one. But it's it's. You better be willing to lose more than you make when it comes to the competitive side of bass fishing. That's good. The way at least that's the way I think about it. No, as long as you're looking at it that way. And one thing I've, I know about you too. I mean, you're on the water all the time. Yeah. So, you know, even after a tournament, or whatever, you're on the water. You're coming back from a tournament. You're on the water. I mean, it's and like you said, that time on the water, and that's something that you appear to love to do. Yeah. And whereas some people, it's probably like it's a grind. Not saying it's gonna be, it's gonna be a grind sometimes yeah. too. But you you seem to have a true passion for the outdoors, um, to where it's it's not it's not a chore for you. You actually enjoy yeah. being out there on the water. Uh, I mean, and that's that's gonna you know as long as you keep that. It it might be twenty degrees and you got your rods and reels are freezing up, mm -hmm. but it's at the maybe at the moment you're sitting there freezing. It's not fun. But you look at it, it's like, man, that was a fun day on the water. We mm -hmm. caught fish and it was 20 degrees out. Right. Now, I mean, that's fun to me. Mm -hmm. Maybe not to other people. Maybe not freezing all day. <laughs> but right, right. <laughs> so one of the things, too, when we talk about marketing yourself or the things that you're doing now or that, like, uh, along the – I mean, we always think of a sponsorship, but it's it's sponsorship. And what I know about sponsorship, too, it's, it's, not, it's not just about the money. It's about a – it's a win-win for both parties yeah. to where, you know, they're going to help you out. Uh, maybe with product or different things like that, and then you're gonna, you know, help them out by putting their name out there. Yep. Have you been able to uh, pick up any any sponsorships or any names? I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, I, I mean, we got the family business that's mm -hmm. there, but I'm definitely working on some bigger names. And that uh, throw out that family business there for yeah, kicking asphalt, paving, excavating. I got I got to shout them out, man. That's right, family business, right? Yes, family sir. owned and operated. Yep. And Absolutely. Link to them will be in the uh, episode description. And that's not an easy business. No. Uh, from what I haven't worked that, but just uh, it's, seeing what you guys do, uh, I think, I mean, you you seem to be a hard worker. Um, don't want anybody thinking that you're just, <laughs> I don't think you've ever been handed anything. Like no, you're, I've, uh, I've got to work for it. Got to work yeah, for it. That's right. Got to, I mean, the entry fees for the opens are, it's no small mm -hmm. amount. And so I had a, I mean, I made an account just for mm -hmm. it, just, that's yeah, working every day. Was. To get in more of the mud here, I think that's the issue with fishing is because it's becoming like golf or mm -hmm. the, the rich white man sport, and it's it sucks because there mm -hmm. are people that go about it the right way, but because of the the lens in which it's viewed on, mm -hmm. it's not like the NFL where a guy grows mm -hmm. up in the sticks and he rises, and mm -hmm. people don't think of him that way. Like, oh, you're at Alabama, that must mean like you know you came mm -hmm. for money. And I think that is a sad thing about fishing. Mm -hmm. Where we are now is that mindset right. of it. So kicking asphalt and what else? I, I definitely got to put a shout out for Jake's. I mean, they've always been there and helped me out. Mm -hmm. I mean, allowed me to put your name on the side of my boat. So mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we appreciate that. <laughs> it's, but it's been nice. I mean, just like that, though. I mean, I've just enjoyed watching you grow up in yeah, the thing here. Absolutely. And seeing the fish that you've caught, you know, and seeing the pictures come through or the big deer that you've shot and the relationship mm -hmm. between you and your dad. Yep. I mean, that is something that, you know, again, that's uh, – we've had other – we've had a lot of other – 
and Thomas or different people talk about how Neil was on and, you know, just where, where they were introduced to fishing, you know, yeah. and you're fortunate, um, you know, that your, your father was in the industry, you know, guiding catfish and, and, and allowed you to be part of that as well with him, you know, and yep. then to, for him to support you, you know, in that. So, you know, again, for us, it's not, it's not about the money so much or the name recognition as it is, uh, the relationships yeah, that, that's, that you build and the connections. Right. And even you were talking about William there earlier. Yeah. Uh, you'll hear me say this all the time is that you, you develop these relationships with people that yep. in within the state, like you say, you go to these tournaments or outside the state. Now you've been to Alabama, you meet people yep. and it's just, it's a great industry being, there's a lot of great people. Yeah. And that to me, to me, that's what, and that's why I say sponsorship is not just the money. It's building that relationship with people. And Absolutely. That Absolutely. So. Relationships are everything. Relationships mm -hmm. are will take you further than anything. That's right. Yep. Yep. So I guess while we're wrapping up here tonight, two things <clears throat> between now and the spring that you want to work on that are fishing related skills and two things that you want to work on that are off the water skills. So or by the time you start college. Uh, and you don't have to answer all of them if you don't. You don't have them. That's fine. Definitely electronics. I know that's. He means like fishing electronics. I don't know if smart phone, <laughs> everybody. Yeah, I, I definitely want to become more knowledgeable in electronics, and and I always want to improve on my casting. That mm -hmm. that's that. Those are my on on the water, off the water. I'm not sure. I'm not sure on that one. Oh yeah, and I, <laughs> <laughs> videos like editing and pr 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 promoting myself. That's that's a big one. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, learning how to promote yourself and how to edit a video. I'm Absolutely. Like, nowadays, I think you know any angler that could do it without like a, a YouTube channel nowadays. It's crazy, yeah. isn't it? How it's much definitely it's it's where we're at right now. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I remember growing up watching Fisherman and Bill Dance never had an Instagram or a Twitter feed yeah. or a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just one show, and you'd give out content once once a week, and now mm -hmm. it's like. It's just insane how much has changed. Mm -hmm. And I would, yeah, and you got to bridge, you bridge that gap between that social media and then the personal one on one connections. And yep. you bridge that gap and you got the old school and the new school, but you. But it's crazy because I think, did you, I think it was you that said last time, like they asked you down at the combine, like about followers, right? Like, yeah. Like that was when we were registering. Well, that was one of our, uh, one of the questions they asked how many followers we had. That's crazy. Do you know yep. how many you have? more or less than a thousand less okay. like i think i have around like 900 but, high nine and so what is your uh what is your page on instagram uh jeremy rafford outdoors okay same with uh my twitter and my facebook all right good deal and like i don't know like to me that blew my mind because i remember coming home from that interview thinking about how many you see espn interviewing like, like college baseball players and how many times they ask or the guy that's gonna win the heisman this year mm -hmm. so how many followers you got yeah it, yep. it is such a social media fishing, is everything it's such yeah. a bass fishing world thing to ask yeah. that yeah. i could never see a guy on espn so how many followers you got like oh yeah like me here no it, it, it's fishing where it is it's so weird like it's not just about like ah yeah i threw 30 touchdown passes plus i have you know 3k on instagram so yeah. that makes me that makes me good for this mm -hmm. i don't know you just you definitely have to think differently now. yeah definitely a brand yeah. Brand, yep. brand you're driven. branding yourself brand driven yep yep, yep. So. it's all about that well, anything else you want to add before we sign off? Not really. I just thank y'all again for having me on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no and problem. why don't you? I uh, just say it one more time. Where can people find you if they want to follow you? Can you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I'm mainly on Instagram. I'm still trying to figure out the other two, but Jeremy Radford Outdoors, where I'm, where I got them on. Dude, you're gonna go far. You really are. Just take it one step at a time, and don't try to just jump the moon in one chance. It's baby steps. Right? Yep, baby steps. You gotta climb that ladder. Yeah. I'm Thomas Ahrens with Fishing the DMV. Jared Mounts. We'll see you next time. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.